everybody. Welcome back to my kitchen. Welcome to Cumberlatcha and welcome to another installment of Marching with Casseroles. Um, i put my Gatorade over here. It's hot up here today. I can't believe. Last weekend, we were working up here. It's 22 degrees. I mean, it got up to 31, 32 in the afternoon, but it was 22. And now this yesterday was 82 degrees. Today, we're supposed to be 75. So I start with my flannel and t-shirt underneath and start losing it as the day goes. So I thought I'd show you in one of our casserole videos that you can actually cook a casserole just about anywhere and anything. Today we're going to use one of my favorite things, my cast iron. This is my Lodge cast iron Dutch oven that I got down in Sevierville at their uh, store. They have one in Sevierville, then down in Pittsburgh where they have their main factory, and they have one in Pigeon Forge. I like going to the one down in uh, Sevierville and Pigeon Forge because they actually have discounts. These, I mean, I'm getting these more than a third, about a third of the price. Just because it has a little blemish on it, a little indentation somewhere, and they can't sell it as perfect, so they sell them down there, and guess what? Cooks just as fine for me, and I can use this for just about anything I want to cook. This one's actually called a double Dutch oven because instead of having just a flat lid on top, you got the double on top, and you can flip it over, and you can actually cook in this. I think I've shown you one of my videos in a little leaf dust in here but one of my videos you can actually put this right on the stove top and you can cook in that just like a frying pan you put it in here if your roast a little bit big you just put it right on top and you got double dutch oven and all the juices gather on the top and then drip right back back down in because it's got the nice little rim right inside here so you're not going to get juices all over your counter but i think i have everything i'm doing a sloppy joe casserole today with pasta i don't have any garlic i didn't buy garlic i saw garlic in the store and i was like on the way up here, I was like, wait a second, I got garlic growing everywhere on the property. I mean, everywhere up here, everywhere I look, there's wild garlic grown. So let's go out. I'm going to show you, get some wild garlic. We're going to use that today. And while we're out, I'll show you, I think there's a big patch of purple dead nettle over here that I'm going to use. I'm going to get it, dry it so I can use it in teas, make some salves, different things with that. That'll be a totally separate video. I think what we're going to start doing is maybe a couple of videos cooking each week and a couple of videos out on Cumberlatcha just getting things off the land. We can make salves, we can we can look forage for different kinds of fruits, little plants, and I'll show you what all you can use right off the land. So once I get up here, I'm gonna be living out my pantry and living off my land as much as I can. So let's go get that garlic. Let's head on down this way. I'm actually walking through where my cabin's going to be sitting. And I know I saw some wild garlic down in here. Actually, here's some right here. Let me get the camera where you can see it, and I'll show you what we got. So, here's some wild garlic right here. I don't know if I'm in the view there of the camera. A lot of people call this wild onion, but it is actually wild garlic. And you can just take one of the stems. I'm going to get one's broken here. And you can smell the garlic flavor. It smells great. So I'm just going to dig this up. I'm gonna dig a little bit down to get the root ball and the bulb. I hope I got it. I love that I can just walk out here on my land and get food to cook with. There we go. Here's a little bulb right there. What are we using? And you can use the greens too, just like a green onion. Look at all these little bulbs in here. Those are all little garlic bulbs that have grown. So I'm just gonna try to get all these and get the dirt off of them as much as possible. We'll clean them when we get back up. There's all them birds. They're probably yelling at me because every time I come up here, I'm fe filling the bird feeders. That they can't wait for me to live here so I can have full for them all the time. Here's a nice one right here. So we need a couple cloves of garlic. I think we got a couple cloves of garlic. We got fresh raw garlic right from Cumberlatcha. And this is all over the place. I mean, everywhere you look, there's just clumps of this. So I'm gonna take these, put them up. Probably shouldn't be down here like this. This is, tick season's getting ready to start. So I gotta keep an eye on it. So 
Let's go see if we can find some of that purple uh, dead net I was telling you about. Hey everybody. So, hope you can see me here. I am in a big patch of purple dead nettle. And it is a, it's classified as a weed, but it is an, a nice little, I call it an herb that has a lot of medicinal properties that you can use. And there's, I'm, I'm, I'm surrounded by little bumblebees, big bumblebees. Here, let me show you a little video I just took. But this is a big old bumblebee. He's just bopping around getting all the nectar from these. So, but uh, purple dead nettle is a member of the mint family. And all I'm gonna do, let me move these uh, wild garlics over that we just picked. And I'm just gonna get some of this and I'm gonna dry it. That way I can make a tea out of it once it's done, make a couple salves and rubs. I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll make a separate video showing you how I do that. Hello, Bumblebee. There's enough here for all of us. I couldn't take you guys around Cumberlatch without bringing you down to our beautiful creek. I could sit here all day long. Just listen to that. All right, I know y'all came here for a cooking video. So sorry about my finger there. So I'll leave my little happy spot and I'll go back up and we'll do some cooking. Okay, everybody, we're back. I got the uh, garlic that we just went and picked. Or not picked, we actually dug it up, forged it. Um, I started pulling off some of the dirt and the outer skin. I'm not real worried about getting a whole bunch of the dirt off of it because believe it or not dirt i mean it's dirty but it has b12 in it and so a lot of that isn't going to hurt if we get in there so i'm just going to chop off the ends here we don't need the roots make it a little easier let me get this stuff out of the way so y'all can see what i'm doing mm, i smell garlic already i cannot believe y'all know how i love garlic and i cannot believe i'm going to be able to in the spring. I'm not sure how long into the summer, but I can go out and get these garlics, dig them. I'm trying to find out, I don't know if I can dry them or not. Nice thing about these little roots, I'm just gonna save all this stuff that's going over there in the compost bin that's way over on the right. So I'm just gonna put these right over there out of the way. I'm not gonna waste anything. So let me get the stove started. I do have my propane stove up here instead of cooking over the fire today. So I'm just gonna turn on the propane and get it started up here. I haven't used this one since when Mama Vera was here. So you get some flows here. All right, got a nice fire flame going there. I'm sure you can hear it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put the cast iron over here. Let it start warming up. And I've got one pound of ground beef. Let me move my garlic out of the way here. And I'm just gonna cook off this ground beef. Get it nice and browned because there is flavor in the brown. You don't wanna just cook it. You wanna get a little bit of brown on it, get some texture. And I'm gonna break that up in here. And yes, I've washed my hands after I got done foraging for that. I'm just gonna put this over here to put my little scraps on that I'm gonna put over in the compost bin. Turn this down a little bit. The wind's blowing, so it's blowing around. Let me get one of my... It's not gonna take long to cook this hamburger off in this cast iron, that's for sure. Oops. 
I think I got this unbalanced. Got it sitting on a root. So I'm just going to let that sit there and cook for a minute. I'm going to clean up these garlics. I got most of everything off of them. But I'm just going to slice them up. I can't handle a little knife. Let me get my big knife. Just dice these up into small pieces. And we'll put that in. Now these will burn just as much as regular garlic. They're more like an onion texture. And a lot of people think that they're wild onions, but they're actually wild garlic. So, but you can use the all parts of it, the white bulb or the greens. And I'm gonna cut up all of it and use it. Get all the greens off that I don't want. Actually, I'm just gonna cut off the top. Put these over here for compost. I'm building up my compost to do in my garden that I gotta get cleaned out. Let me stir this meat over here for a second. Hmm. It's cooking quick. But like I said, I'm doing building up the compost. Back here on the right, you can well, your left, my right. Um, on the left, you'll see. One of my raised flower beds, raised garden beds. I've got two of them so far. I'm hoping for about four more. A couple small ones, a couple more this size. And I've been collecting, I've got, you can't see it over here, i got some old tree stumps. Put the tree stumps down in the bottom of it, then some um, tree branches, a little bit of mulch. A lot of this rich gar mountain soil, this soil is so black and it just, this is gonna grow some great plants. I mean, this stuff's been up here for ever and all these leaves have been rotting all time every fall they fall and the ground I, I was digging down when we was building the uh workshop here went down by that far of just dark black dirt and then got a little clay about underneath it so you i you know me i almost a whole part under there i just kept digging it out putting it in my wheelbarrow taking it over and putting it by where i'm going to have the garden because i'm going to be using that in the raised beds so i'll put some of that in the raised beds I'll put also some of the uh, peat moss and things just to fill it. I'll probably work mainly with raised beds this year because I've got to clear out a bunch of trees and get area cleaned out. Okay, this is cooking quick and there's not a lot of grease in there, fat, so that's going to be great. But the ground chuck was a good one. They didn't have a lot of oil in there. So to this, I'm going to add one can of diced tomatoes, and they're a petite dice. And I didn't go by the uh, storage unit and get my canned tomatoes. So we got these. I got a bag back here putting my trash in. And then into that, we're going to add one cup of ketchup. And this is what, 14 ounces, and I only need eight ounces. So we'll be leaving six ounces in there. So eight, six, we'll just use about two thirds of it. And that cap is so cute. Let's just get rid of that. Put my ketchup in there. There we go. Now put that back in the cooler. If you notice, I got an extension cord. I don't know if you can see it going into the store or the uh, workshop here we actually we have electric up here i got lights in that place and i can plug in all of our tools that's what the electric plug is going into there right now i have my solar generator we got that before we came up here and we actually have solar panels way over there on the other side by where we're going to put the cab and i'll show you a picture of those here and that's what we charge our we have a blue eddy I think it's a 2000 C something. I'm not sure, but it's a nice one. And we charge that with the solar panels. You can also charge it right out of electric from the wall. You can charge it from your uh, car. So we just, we're getting free sunlight from God. We're charging, we got electric. Built this right here, which is battery power tools, a table saw and a, um, what we call it a chop saw, but it's a miter saw. And those both are electric, but they were powered by the um, Blue Eddy, as well as charging all the batteries. So let me get these. I'm talking a whole lot here. And I, this is that knife mom bought when we were, she was up here. 
it is the worst knife that I think we've either one ever had. And I do not like it at all. Now I'm gonna save the greens and I'm gonna use it to decorate the top. So I'm gonna put these in now. They're not gonna burn because they'll have that liquid in there. I've got two peppers. I'm just gonna get those cut down. I like to cheat and just go around the outside. And all this extra is going in compost. Nothing gets wasted on Cumberlatcha. And I'm just gonna use two peppers today. Can you hear that? We are <laughs> up in the Cumberland Mountains and I think this is the most popular area for ATVs. They are all over the place up here. Every time we come up here, get rid of these seeds, put them on the ground, they're just gonna grow here next year, which isn't a bad thing. But this is the number one tourist area, I think, for ATVs. They're, like I said, everywhere around here. And you can hear them in the background there. And of course, I got old Red sitting over there. We call him Old Red. I don't know if you can see the license plate there. We bought it at Old Red, Blake's Bar. We like going there in Nashville and in Gatlinburg. And for some reason we got it. The name just kind of popped out and that's what he became. So now it's Old Red every time we need to get, get him out, we call him Old Red. And I get him out a lot because we have people walking up here. This place has been, well, for years and years and years vacant. Nobody living here, nobody up here turn that down a little bit and still get a lot of few people coming up here and I like to get on that when I hear people and just make my presence known let them know it's private property now had one yesterday was actually just finishing the lean-to section there that's over old red over there and heard somebody t moving around back in the back so I went back there and introduced myself and He's like, oh, wow, I didn't know this was private property. I didn't know I could be here. And I'm standing right beside a no trespassing sign right beside me. I said, what do you think this means? It's just, I don't know. It's not a good idea to trespass on people's property, especially in Tennessee. Because I don't know if you can see over there on top of Old Red, I got my grandpa's, uh, we'll call it squirrel, squirrel getter on the front of that. And I know how to use that. Grandpa left that to me when he passed. And that's one of my treasures I keep up here. I don't leave it here. I keep it with me. Bring it back every time I come up. So, but it's nice up here. We haven't had any problems. We got great neighbors down on the other side of the creek. Always talk to them. A few people as we're coming up, they always stop us that live back in the back off the main road. And I think we got to know them just because. Whew. Okay, sorry about that. We had a little technical difficulties. I haven't used this, like I said, I haven't used this stove since last uh, fall when mom was up here. And a little gas leak there in the back that was flaming and started burning the back of my stove. I looked back there and saw smoke and it wasn't coming from here. I was like, nothing's burning. I looked back there. So I went in and got my little gas detector. This thing works great. I will put a link down below. Anyone uses propane for anything. I got a propane tank under here. I'm leaving the door open so if I need to, I can turn it off. You just put this beside it and it will tell you if there's any kind of leak. And that's what I did back here. I just pulled out the stove and checked and there was, there was a leak of gas back there that we had to tighten up. But I'm gonna leave this open. It's going now. Put my tools over here to the side. Got it tightened up. But that thing works great. So I'm gonna just finish this pepper, get everything in the pot, cover it, and let it start cooking. I have absolutely no idea where I just was talking to you. Um, maybe talking, oh yeah, let me close my door back here so you get a better view. But yeah, we charge everything. That's what I was talking about, the Blue Eddy. So right now we're using nothing but solar up here, and it works great. There goes another ATV. They're everywhere. We've only had them try to come up on the property one time. That boy was brain dead. Uh, he ain't got the brains as mom and Jesus gave him. He didn't know how to use them. I stopped him down at the end of our driveway. I was on Old Red, took it down there because I heard noises coming up and explained to him nicely, this is private property. 
can't ride your ATV up here. And he goes, oh, I always have in the past. I'm like, oh, that's nice. Um, but I own it now, and <laughs> we don't want people up here. He goes, but you got your ATV up there. I'm like, yeah, it's my land. I can do that. I don't know. Sometimes you just, this younger generation doesn't make sense. They just don't know what they're saying. So, like I said, we've had no problems with any of our neighbors. And anything we need, I'm sure they'd be right there for us like we are for them, would be for them. Which is why I love Tennessee. Stopped at the Cracker Barrel the other day on the way up here. I haven't been to Cracker Barrel since moved here from Florida. And it's funny as I was checking out, the lady behind the uh, register said something about hugging the last lady was in there. She said, I'm a hug. I was like, okay. She was, I love to hug people. My mom even said I was a hugger when I was growing up. I was like, well, good job, girl. She goes, how about a hug? Okay. She came all the way around, gave me a big old hug. And then what I find around here, everybody likes to say is have a blessed day, which I think is wonderful. I'm starting to say it myself now. More stuff for the uh, compost. And she gave me a big old hug. Told me to go out there and make the best of the day Jesus gave us. And I did. Came up here and we finished putting the roof on this thing. <laughs> so it's nice having a place you can get away to now. Even if you used to, when it was raining, we couldn't come up here and work. Because you'd just get wet. There was nothing you could do. Now we can come up there and in the workshop, work on things, build things. You can build these planters right inside there. Because on the other side of the workshop here, we're over there where Old Red's sitting, we have double doors. And so we can take anything. Old Red could even pull right in there if he, we wanted to take him in there. But we have double doors there so we can take things in and out that we work on. Mom, this knife, you were right, sucks. I got to bring a different one up here. I keep some of my kitchen stuff up here for when I'm here. A little bit of skin. But we're going to hopefully get the cabin in the next few months. We've been looking at either building it ourselves, like we just did the workshop, or even buying a pre-built Amish built, just the shell. Can get that in there. Just the shell, and then we'll finish off the inside. I said, we don't need anything big. Just bedroom, kitchen, and pantry. That's the only thing I'm worried about. I want my big kitchen and pantry. Big enough to cook in and pantry big enough to store all my food. Because so I like to have at least a year's worth of food. Two years if possible, but I know starting out it's going to take a while. Of course, i got a whole bunch already saved up and stored up in the uh, storage shed right now. And people are getting concerned about being in the storage shed. It is climate controlled. So it's air conditioned and heated. So, have no problem with that. Let me get that stirred in. I think I got my mitt on wrong. Man, this smells good. I bet my neighbors around here, well, we're, we're ways away from everybody, but I bet this smell is just wafting, 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 drifting through this everywhere. Okay. This recipe also, we're done with this for right now, so I'm going to get it out of the way. Calls for two cups of corn. So, mom leaves her lids on. Mom, you need to quit leaving your lids on. Give you a false seal. Like I showed you guys once before, the way I take it off is with the lid, or the ring, and just put it underneath there, lift up, and you hear the seal pop. So I'm going to put that corn in there. Mm, my sweet corn. Mom, mom brought me a bunch of these. I love it. So I'll put all that corn in there. Yes, I know. They're mad. I haven't filled their bird feeder today. Last weekend when I came up and it was cold, they, ooh, that's hot. They literally, as I'm feed, filling the bird feeder that hangs over here, they were landing on the ground around me just swarming, waiting for me to fill because I guess I got them spoiled now. Okay, got the corn in there. I'm going to put about... Two tablespoons of brown sugar in there because we like our sloppy joes a little sweet. And I'm going to put about a teaspoon of ground pepper. This is the one I showed you in my last video. It doesn't have a lid, so we're just going to shake it. Get about a teaspoon in there of the, ground, or the yellow pepper. I've got one can. These are four ounces. I don't love these things in anything. These mild, they're just green chilies roasted. 
They're great. I'm going to put that in the bag over here. Get all my seasonings over here. We're going to save that one for later. We're going to put about a tablespoon of paprika. And about the same amount of chili powder. Got to give it some good flavor. And a little bit of onion powder. Where's my garlic powder? Somebody took my garlic powder. I know I got garlic in there, but I always like to put a little garlic powder in there. Huh, I must have left it in the bag. Didn't bring it. Okay, let me close this up. And I've also got, let me stir this up first before we get any further. Get these flavors all in there melding together. Man, this looks good. I could eat this right now. It's like a little corn and veggie stew. All right. Uh, I've got one box of uh, elbow pasta. It's the, what is this? The one pound? Yeah, 16 ounces. The recipe calls for 12 to 16 ounces. Now, you can either, from this point, already have your pasta cooked off, which I don't, of course, and add it to the pot. Or you can add it just like, remember a hamburger helper? Some of you probably still make it. I know I do, but I make my own. I don't buy that box stuff. Last time I bought it, you put this over here. Last time I bought that, the package of pasta was just this little bitty thing. They said it was for the family. You couldn't have fed nobody with that. So I'm going to put my pasta in here. Get it stirred around, mixed in there. I'm going to put two cups of water. That's what's going to cook and simmer, and this pasta is going to absorb and swell up and become all nice and soft al dente. These birds, I think, want me to come and feed them. Okay, so i got two cups of Jesus water here. For those of you that do not know, there's a spring just a little bit up the road from here. Natural spring, and it has the best water. I call it Jesus water because it comes out of the mountain. Jesus is giving it to us for free. And that's all we drink. I literally stop there and get it on the way back to the camper, the RV, and put it, drink it at the camper, stop and bring it here, and that's what we're going to be drinking. I actually found two springs, I think I told you yesterday. I think it's two springs down by our creek. They don't look like they're putting out a lot of water, but if they are, I'm my own Jesus water here on the land. There we go. All right, I'm going to put the lid on this. Oh, pasta down. I'm going to put the lid on this. I'm going to cook it for about 12 to 15 minutes. Just enough time to cook that pasta. And I'll be back. Okay, so I am back. It's been about 15 minutes. It's absorbed most of the water. Now I did add another cup. I kept checking it and stirring it. And it was taking more water than I thought it would. So I did add another cup to this. So now I've got, this is a two cups of cheese. Don't blow away. Now I'm going to put about half of it and mix it right into this casserole because that's going to help bind it up. And if you notice over here, I've got the top of my Dutch oven. And it's on the burner. I'm getting it hot. Because I can't put this in the oven to melt up the top, melt the cheese that I'm getting ready to put on the top. So cast iron holds heat so well. And once I turn this off, in fact, I'm turning this off. Because it's still cooking. And it's going to continue to cook, even with this off. Because cast iron's retaining the heat. So I got that all stirred in there. You can see that. I'm going to take the remaining cheese, and I'm just going to put it all over the top. Now, for you at home, you're just going to do this in your oven. You could do this in cast iron like I did. You can do it in a uh, 9 by 13 casserole dish, however you like. And the recipe I put below will be for cooking in your oven, because not most of you are not going to be cooking out on Cumberlatcher. But you can see, you can do this if you go camping. If the electric goes off, get some gas, and got it going. This thing is smoking hot, so I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to turn off my gas down here because I'm done with it. Look at that cast iron smoking hot. I'm going to first, I ch chopped up all the tops of those garlic, make my little chive, put those right on top. 
You know me, I like to decorate. And they're good. So I'm going to put that there. I'm going to tip this pot so you can see what it looks like. So you can see, I'm going to just bring it right over here to the table. So I can let the rest of it cook right here. So it's all ready. Nice and cheesy. Set this here. I'm going to flip this up on top of it. Let it sit there for a while. And it's just going to melt that cheese. Give it about three to five minutes. And that cheese will be nice and melty. I can still see the heat coming off that pot. But I think what I was talking about when we had our little fire emergency over here, um, my raised beds, I had a lot of you because I put pictures on Facebook. I put pictures, I think I put some on YouTube as well, but you were concerned about the pallet wood. All of this has been heat treated. We checked it before we um, started using it. None of them have chemicals in them, so we did check that. But I am going to line the inside with plastic because I don't want it to rot. I mean, it's wood. It's going to rot, and I don't want it to be gone next year or the following year. So I'm going to line the inside and all the way down to the ground with plastic so that it'll, you know, won't deteriorate. And I can grow in it again next year and the following year, hopefully. I've got two of these, like I said, they're over here. They're going to be the entrance to my garden. I'm thinking about putting a cattle panel over the top. I'm doing some kind of vine, either cucumbers, something, you know, they can vine up over there and I can just pick real easily. In the spring, maybe I could do spring peas or uh, another kind of pea. I like, I like the spring peas so I can... Um, pop the pods open and dry the peas out. We're big on peas up here. I love peas. So we're going to be utilizing that. We've used a lot of stuff with pallets. I, we've probably got 500 pallets. There's a place that we found that was just giving them away. All you do is stop and get them. And we'd go back and forth the trailer two or three times a day sometimes. And we got still lots of pallets piled over there that we're going to be breaking down. I got a few over here. So we just keep breaking down, pile them in different areas, covering up with the tarps and keeping them dry because I'm going to build my chicken coop hopefully out of that. Probably the little barn for the goats because we want to have goats up here and chickens. Probably a little lean-to like that for the goats, not as high, and then, you know, cover both sides so they can get in out of the rain because goats do not like water. They don't like getting wet. I don't know where that bird is, but he's been up there chirping to me. I think he wants some of our lunch. But we're trying to do as much as we can, right, either from the land or from free things. I mean, we did buy the 2 befores and 2 by 6s and everything for this. I don't think we recycled anything for the shed. Actually, some of the trim around the soffit at the top is going to be from pallet wood, so we can trim that out, and the back soffit's out of pallet wood. So I'm, I'm smelling this stuff. It's right through that cast iron. I can smell that seeping out. This stuff smells good. It's getting my attention. Let me check it real quick here. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Look at that. The cheese is nice and melted just like you did it in the oven. So see, you don't have to do a casserole just in a casserole dish in an oven. You can do it anywhere. Cast iron, you can do it in a crock pot. You can do it just about anywhere. And now, my favorite part, eat. Let me get my little dish over here. I'm just going to get a little bit out. Give it a taste. Okay. okay, let me get a little bit of this out of here. You know what? It might be just as easy to get out with this. Mmm, oh, this smells good. There we go. Stick that in there. Get my spoon. Pasta's good, nice. It's not hard at all. Mmm, that's good. That's a tastes like a sloppy Joe. Instead of the Carbs from the bread, we're getting carbs from the pasta. Nice sloppy, look at that cheese. Mm. I think what I'm excited about the most, I can taste that garlic. That garlic grew right out here, wild, all over this land. I am going to so love harvesting things off this land. So, I want to thank you all for joining us for Marching In With Casseroles. Thank you for joining me up here at Cumberlatcha. We have, what's today, we have five more days of five more recipes. And then 31st, don't forget, I'm going to do the drawing for $100. And make sure that you have went and looked at everyone else's videos. Like, subscribe, because all these are new channels. So subscribe to them, they're really good. And make sure you put a comment, because I'm going to use the random comment picker after I pick choose one day of the month. And that person's going to win a $100 um, 
<clears throat> gift card to Amazon and a few other gifts I'll be telling you on the 31st. I'll show you what you're going to be getting. But don't forget to do that. Come back and see us real soon. Thank you so much for joining me up here at my special place. I love Cumberlatcha. And soon we're, I'm going to be living here and we're going to be having videos just about every single day during the week up here from Cumberlatcha. So take care. God bless and love you. Take care. Bye-bye.